So I was on eBay oogling cameras out of my price range. You probably know the feeling. And I decided, you know what, this time's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna set the max price to $100. Naturally, most of the options were point and shoots and plastic nightmares from the 90s, but I did see something interesting. A full metal vintage era Nikon SLR. And yes, fellow Americans, I just said Nikon. So my curiosity is peaked. Why is this only $70? Maybe there's something wrong with it. Maybe it's terrible to use. Maybe the technology just wasn't there yet. Who knows? So I did some research. I didn't find a whole lot, but what I did find painted a picture of incredible value, a camera that could rival some of Nikon's more professional cameras, but at a fraction of the cost. That's the camera that we're gonna be talking about today. One that's been heavily overlooked, one that I found on eBay for $70, and one that's quickly become one of my favorites in my daily carry, this guy, the Nikon FE. So rather than just bore you with specs right off the bat, I'm just gonna tell you why I like this camera. So if you want the too long, didn't read version, this is it. This thing does everything you need and nothing that you don't. It is just as capable as more sought after cameras in Nikon's lineup like the Nikon FE, but way cheaper. It is super solid, super durable. Because it's not so expensive, I'm not worried about breaking it, having it on my shoulder, maybe hitting into some rocks, keeping it in the door of my van. Uh, this thing, yeah, it's very solid. It's not going anywhere. It's not breaking anytime soon. Um, did I have anything else I wanted to say? Oh yeah, did I mention that it's a joy to shoot? It is the fully manual tactile film experience. Just the crank, the shutter, Everything about this is like, yeah, you could romanticize that. <laughs> so that's really all the information that you need to make this purchasing decision. But if you stick around, I might say something else interesting, like the fact that this camera uses Nikon's F bayonet mount, which is a mount that has been in use since 1959 to present day. That gives you access to over a half a century of lenses. That means inexpensive lenses. That means good quality lenses. That means that if you want to shoot this this lens on a modern digital Nikon SLR, you can do that. If you want to shoot your modern Nikon F bayonet mount glass on this camera, you can do that. No autofocus, of course. Something that I don't think gets talked about enough in film camera reviews is the viewfinder. The viewfinder is literally the window through which you make all of your photos. It's extremely important. If it's dim, if it's bright, if it's easy to see, if it's sharp, if the meter in there is nice to use. And I'm happy to say that this is excellent. So anyone who shot on a Nikon SLR, this is probably old news to you, but when you turn the aperture ring, you can physically see through the viewfinder what aperture you're on. I can actually see, I'm looking at the lens. So the viewfinder is a breeze to look through, but then also the meter is really, really nice. It's got a wonderful little needle meter, needle meter, wonderful little needle, 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 needle meter. I really like these as opposed to the LED readout, like the LCD readouts where it says like, this is your shutter speed, 500, man, that's what you gotta shoot. This, it allows you to actually look through and go, okay, I can actually see the exposure change on the needle as I go window, not window, window, not window, window, not window. It makes metering without numbers much easier. So, very approachable metering system in this camera. Now, up until owning this camera, my main 35 millimeter SLR was the Canon EOS 3, which is an incredible camera. I love that camera. But the issue that I have with it is it's so advanced and it's so modern that it almost feels like you're shooting digital sometimes, but you can do anything on that camera. You know, you kind of lose some of the magic of actually shooting. This is just, it's classic. It's aesthetically appealing. It feels good in the hand. It just, you know, this just feels like what you imagine when you think of shooting film. And because this thing's not super electronic, you can kind of just do whatever with it. Now, this is not a fully manual camera. So this does have a battery. It does require a battery to shoot, but I don't think that that's really an issue. And if it does run out of battery, then you can shoot. There's a mechanical 90 here. So you can shoot your photos at 9 190th of a second. Use your brains on that one, folks. Now this thing is durable enough where I just kind of toss it around. It's just like a brick. 
not heavy brick, this is a small brick, a nice small light brick. But I even just keep this in the door, the driver's side door pocket of the van. And that's just where it lives. I just take it out when I want to go shoot some photos and then I just put it back in there. And I would never ever do that with like my Mamiya 7 or almost any of my other cameras really, because you know, I feel like they're all a little bit more delicate. But this one, I just toss it in there. It's good. Very reliable. I've been shooting on this for a little over six months now, and it has not failed me. Now, normally I shoot most of my work fully manual, but one of the things that I like about this camera is how well the aperture priority and the exposure lock work on it. What that means, if you're not familiar with those terms, is that I can choose the aperture, right? And then the camera will do the rest. But for those instances where you want to make sure that you're metering for the shadows without fully manually metering, then what you can do is you can point your camera at the shadows and then you just literally this dial right here. You just push that switch in and that will hold the beater setting for the shadows and then you just point it up and then you take your photo. Super easy, don't need to fuss around with shooting manual, but of course, sometimes I do. But the fact is that this camera works with you, not against you. If you just want to leisurely walk through town and capture a few things and not have to think too much about numbers, easy. All you gotta do is choose your depth of field and focus and press the button. It doesn't get much easier than that, folks. Nikon, they were kind of the kings of 35 millimeter SLRs. You know, I've shot on the Canon AE-1 and the A-1 and the uh, AE program or whatever they're called. I can't remember. And those are cool. They're, they're nice cameras. They're fun to use. But one, the metering system is completely backwards in those cameras. And I don't condone trying to learn how to manually shoot on those cameras. It's just, you're literally learning it backwards. I don't know why those cameras are oriented that way. But, you know, Nikon just, they just had it figured out, right? This is just flawlessly executed. Like, sure, this was not intended to be the more professional camera. This camera was kind of sat in the middle of their lineup, right? This was the photo enthusiast kind of camera. The camera that this would be competing with, the more professional version of this that people always kind of fawn over is the Nikon F3. Now this camera gets overshadowed by the F3 quite a bit, but functionally it does relatively the same thing. Now sure, we can compare tiny little details, like this camera's maximum shutter speed is 1 1,000th of a second, and the F3's is 1 2,000th of a second. Okay, so you get an extra stop. So just for fun, let's compare the two. Both are fully metal, neither are fully mechanical, and both require batteries to operate. The FE is smaller and lighter. The F3 has better weather sealing, has more advanced metering and customization, supposedly, and the addition of shutter priority mode. The FE has fully manual and aperture priority mode, which I think if you're trying to learn how to, I don't know, get a feel for shooting manual, but you're not ready to fully take the plunge yet, aperture priority is the way to go this camera is for you. Now the price at the time of making this video, the F3 is going for anywhere between $250 and $500, where this, the FE, without a lens, is going pretty consistently for under a hundred. So you're getting roughly the same amount of camera, maybe a little bit less of the hype, for 20% of the cost, potentially. Now, I wanna make a disclaimer. I found this one for $70. Your mileage may vary. I chose one that wasn't in mint condition because it was $70. I'm totally okay with the cosmetic defects on this, but it performs wonderfully at pretty much everything. So yeah, if you want something that's like open box, gonna have no single marks or scratches on it, you're gonna pay for that. But for a camera that you're gonna take everywhere, that's gonna live with you, that's going to take a beating, does it really need to be that nice? I would argue it's actually better to buy the more beat up camera so that you don't baby it. Because babying your gear is how you miss photos. Not saying you should like roll your 645 down a cliff or anything, but it's just my two cents. I've listed a lot of reasons why I like this camera, but I am going to list one reason that I don't like this camera. And that is because I have experienced one issue with it. And that is that when you're shooting an aperture priority, 
if you point it at something that's too bright, one one thousandth of a second is not fast enough to capture this, right? Then the shutter will lock open, essentially. And the viewfinder will black out, the shutter will be open. And the only way to fix that is to move the shutter speed dial over to the manual shutter speed, M90, and then the shutter will close. But essentially you've, you've missed that moment, you've lost that frame. So uh, it's a pretty minor issue because as long as you are paying attention to where the meter is reading, and you're not like maxed out when you shoot the photo, then you're gonna be fine. I don't know if that's an issue just on my camera or if that's an issue with all of these, but uh, yeah, that's something to be aware of, but very minor. It really only has been a problem once or twice. And other than that, this thing has consistently captured amazing images I'm super happy with. I love carrying it around and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So yeah, you know, whether you're just trying to dip your toes into the world of, you know, fully manual cameras, or, you know, you're super comfy, but you're just looking for something a little bit more robust and casual and something that you can carry around and not worry about. I think that this camera really has a lot to offer a lot of people and it's kind of overlooked. There's so many cameras out there that are truly, truly excellent that are just waiting for new lives to be given to them. And we, you know, as consumers, we look for the best. We're always looking for the best. And we arrive at what is the best. Maybe it's the F3s or the Mamiya 7s or, you know, the X-Pans or whatever, whatever that option is. And then, you know, those prices skyrocket. We end up paying out of pocket so much money for, you know, what another camera could probably do for less money so this this is that camera I love it if I can make great images on this you can make great images on this um, but yeah I guess this is also to say that it doesn't need to be this camera this doesn't this is also not the best this is just a camera that I found on eBay for a hundred dollars less than a hundred dollars seventy dollars so yeah just I don't know commit to the adventure and go online and see what you can come up with Make sure it's tested and that it's working. But other than that, go crazy. You might just find the next hidden gem. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time very soon. Peace.